Let's all grab some stuff. Sugar water. Well, you got you got a coffee cup, so. What? It's not for you. Mr. <laughs> Arnold. Um, I need a. Let's all head on out there. Okay. Let's see. You guys want to carry the bees? Absolutely. Come on. You can carry the bees. They won't. They won't bite you. Not those, not those, not those. Here. Who wants to carry bees? I need someone to help me carry the bees. I think you're a little small to carry bees. Here, grab, grab Just grab hold of the bottom of it. They won't bother you. <laughs> it might tickle your belly. There's nothing to you for They can't get out, so they can't sting you. Just, just don't drop them. Okay. Yeah. Carry it. I can carry bees. You can carry bees. I can carry bees. What about the queens? Right? Oh, I got the Come on, Isaiah, let's go. Let's grab a coffee cup. I'm going around and maybe close the door. Then you leave it open, it don't matter. Uh, we can walk straight through. Straight through? There's no ant mounds there. Probably be better to go that way. Sugar water right in front of the hive. Where's the other sugar water? Mm -hmm. Sugar water right. This is what they're going to be feeding on for the next three days. What? And what we're going to do? What we're going to do? We're going to open up the box. We're going to pull out a can of sugar water that they're feeding on right now. We're going to turn the box upside down, and we're going to shake the bees out. See which one, Isaiah. Which one should we do first? Um, this. One. We're gonna do this one first, says Isaiah. Okay. Now, let's see. No one's probably gonna get stung. However, if someone does get stung, the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to pull the sting around. First and foremost, because that's just going to make things worse. They'll inject the, the venom into your arm or in, wherever they sting you. But there, there's also another issue. These, when they, when they sting and that venom sac is pulled out, that emits a pheromone that lets all the other bees know, hey, I just died. You guys need to go after this person or creature, whatever it was. And what the bees will want to do is they'll want to find out where that pheromone is at and start stinging in the same place. So, if you get stung, one second, if you get stung, if you could just go that way, away from the group so the bees don't smell that pheromone. They're probably not even gonna get out of the hive much, but it's, it's still an issue. Any questions? Um, go ahead. I don't, I can't believe these are all They can sting. But they probably won't. I didn't get stung last night. Can you show us what the things in the hive look like? Oh, you want? Y'all you haven't seen the inside of the hive. Yeah, we come. Yeah, come on over. This is a top bar hive, and the bees are going to build on these bars right here all their honeycomb instead of a traditional frame that comes down. So it's just the it's just going to loop down big pieces of honeycomb. Why is there water? Why is there water on the, in the base of the hive? Yes. That's so all the fire ants in this little field aren't going to get inside my hive. Okay, so that's a good reason. Yes, sir? I like bees. What's that? Oh, I like bees too. Inside of the hive, there's going to be this. 
And this right here is we're going to put the sugar water in. The sugar water container turned upside down has a bunch of little holes in it. The bee is going to just come to the bottom of the of the uh, mason jar and just suck the sugar water right out of the, the mason jar. Now for the first three days, they may not be able to find this right away. They may not get as excited. But once they start finding it, once all the bees know that it's there, they'll go through one of these a day. And they'll need that because it takes a lot of energy, uh, a lot of our resources to build comb and for the queen to lay eggs and do what she's supposed to do. So go ahead and put that in place. I'll do it for the first six weeks. Um, just to get them going to help them start. I probably don't have to, but why not give them the extra help? I didn't know if every I And I'll have to feed them during the summer. During the summer, there's a, there's just the dirt in this area. There's not enough for them to eat. Uh, North Carolina has plenty of pollen for them to eat, but they also need nectar as well. They need they need two things: nectar and pollen. That's like the meat and potatoes. The pollen being the the protein, and the nectar being the carbohydrates. So that they need a mixture of both. And during the summer months, when there's drought, when there's nothing blooming, I'll probably wind up feeding them. Uh, we probably won't get honey the first year uh, because they're going to spend a lot of their resources, a lot of their energy um, building comb and, and laying eggs and doing that kind of stuff. But next year, next year we'll, we'll be doing fine. Now, it's possible I'll get some honey, I, maybe a taste of it. It really depends on how well they do. And each hive, each colony does different. Does it different? Okay, ten thousand. What you start with? Would you, would you, did I hear you say one time it grows like sixty thousand in that? We're going to put ten thousand bees in the hives today. Okay. Uh, right away, they're going to start building comb. Right away, the queen's going to start laying eggs. Okay. Uh, it will go from ten thousand to sixty in about six weeks. Wow. The queen lays fifteen hundred eggs to two thousand eggs a day. She has all the eggs. Uh, in her right now. It's not like she produced them. She's she's set. She's ready to go. She's already been mated. So I don't got to worry about her flying out looking for a mate and not coming back. Okay. But she's she's ready. She's she's raring to go. If she doesn't she doesn't lay the eggs while she's in the box. She, she, she's like on hold. She's on hold right now. Home. Yep. She needs comb to lay the eggs. Okay. She needs comb and and she needs a ten uh, nurse bees. Okay. Uh, to start doing what they do with the baby. Because they the queen doesn't feed her her eggs. Doesn't feed her larvae. That's uh, that's up to the nurse bees. Okay. There's, there's different state every bee, every female bee has serves different purposes during her life. She starts out as like a, a cleanup bee, then she goes to a nurse bee, then she goes to a guard bee, then she goes out to a forager. Inside of span of about two weeks. And then for about four weeks, she goes out, gets nectar and pollen and whatnot. And that's her life cycle, about six weeks. Okay. That's all they, that's all they live. That's all any of them live. That's all the female workers live. Okay. The queen the, lives? The queen lives anywhere three to seven years. Okay. Depending on how quick they replace her. And they, they make that decision? The they, make that decision. they can make that decision. If she's not laying enough eggs, if she's not um, laying a good pattern, if she's not um, doing what she's supposed to be doing for the good of the colony, they will replace her. They'll create five or six new queens, and the first queen out of the queen, out of the queen cells goes, stings all the other queens while they're still in their cell, goes out, finds the, the queen of the hive, and will kill her. It's not, it's not even a fair battle. The new, queens, <laughs> the, the new queen's just young and she's energetic and she, she'll win. Taking a whole lot of study. No, it's, it's, it's actually pretty simple. Yeah, I, know very, I know very, very little so far. Really? Mm -hmm. Any more questions? So, what do we put in first? The what we put in first, is we need to find my little staple gun. We need to find queen number one.
and I'm going to go in four bars. I'm going to put her in place. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one while I'm at it. You don't have to open her up. You just put nope. her in. She is oh. in her little queen cage, and all the other ones are going to swarm around her. That's what they're doing now. Well, there's there's five attendants in there with her. Yeah. She needs attendants to clean her and to... These are very tactile. They have to touch each other to let each other know that things are going okay. And that's one of the things that she's doing right now. That they're doing right now with her. That's actually very cool. Excuse me. Yes, sir? I, I like bees. You like bees? Sorry, Queen Bee. <laughs> okay, that ain't gonna work. Here we go. Okay, now put the bars forward. Show how that concept works, right? Like this right here? Yeah. You got holes in the lid or something? What I is got that? holes in the bottom of the lid. Yeah. And the bees are going to go up underneath. And they got little tongues. And they're going to come up to the bottom of the lid and just suck the sugar water right out of the container, right out of the mason yeah. jar. Kind of like a hummingbird feeder. Yeah. Just like a hummingbird feeder, yep. Yeah. Like I was saying before, we're going to feed them for about, you know, probably about six weeks. Cool. So every day, um, We'll mix up some sugar water, a one-to-one -one mixture, and I'll come out here and put her inside. A little labor-intensive the first six weeks. Any questions? You like bees, don't you? Can you work from the other side when you do I can't. I kind of want to get reaction. Okay. Let's see. Was it Hunter or Dylan didn't like these? Okay, Jeremy. Fine. No, no. I'm not judging them. This is... Why? I'm still drinking coffee. These probably like coffee. They probably do. That means probably not so good for them. <laughs> you don't know that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use my hive tool here, just a little crowbar. We're going to pop this little piece of paneling off. And right here is a can of sugar water. That's what they've been feeding on for the last day. So they've only been in that box for that. They were loaded up probably about 3 o'clock on, on Thursday. Somewhere down in Georgia. I'm not sure where the bee yard is that we got them from. I bought them from Busy Bee Apiary. So Bees. <laughs> it's done by weight. It's about three pounds. Oh, okay. I didn't figure there was a true count. Dude, yeah. no, get back in there. Oh. <laughs> 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 put, I already counted you. I'm with it. <laughs> okay, now, if you're afraid of bees, you want to step back just a little bit. 
See the swarm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that like almost empty now? Oh no, that's full. No, it's still got a lot of sugar water in it? Yeah. Okay. Like that one flying around my head? He's grumpy. She's grumpy. You ready? Try to get them all out. Doing a nurse's shake. <laughs> okay. Does anyone want to come up and look in the hive? Now's the time to do it. Now is the time to do it. It's okay. What I'm trying to do here is put these bars back on without crushing one. If I crush one, that would be bad. These are the. Okay. Move around the other side, Frank. Sorry, sorry, Kent. The downside of crushing one, it releases the pheromones. Yeah. That would be bad. They would decide it's a good time to attack you. Yes. And I got a couple grumpy ones flying around me right now. Uh -huh. Yeah, one's lit on you. A couple of them lit on you. Yeah, they'll, they'll find their way back in. Through the front. some debate whether or not they, they sense fear or smell fear. I, I don't know, but they're, they're not going to hurt us. Now the ones that's trapped in there, Frank, how do they get out, do they? There's a uh, bull. There's a little piece on the end that will be able to climb right out. Awesome. Yep. That's it. That's nice and pretty. Okay. Now, there's a slot on both ends of the thing for the tubes going in and out? Just no, just on the front. You don't want slots on both ends because you want to be able to... 
Okay, this is something that's really cool, guys. Already, there are bees on the front, and they got their abdomen pointing up. And what they're doing is there's like a little sac that emits pheromones right behind their venom sac. And that's their happy pheromone. So there's already some bees saying, got their abdomen up, they're fanning that pheromone saying, hey, this is home. Come on in here. Yes. They're saying, hey, we're happy, we found home, this is where home is at. That is. You're smarter See than them a lot all? of people I know. Mm -hmm. There's just a couple of them out front with their, with their butt in there. Now, the hives I did last night, they didn't want to shake them in. Just these folks that never, they didn't go to any bee school, they didn't go to any classes. They're a, little, they're a little nervous about bees, so what we did is we just opened the top and just sort of set it in there. Now what they're going to have to do three days from now is go in, they'll have to be geared up, uh, and go in and yank out that, that box. So, I just wanted to do it the old fashioned way. I wanted the experience of just shaking bees. <laughs> okay, hive tool. Where'd I put my hive tool? Yep. So you can. Maybe there yep. wasn't one that crawled in there. <laughs> you can have beehives right next to each other. They're going to, when they start foraging, what they're going to do is they're going to come out, they're going to recognize they're in a different place, they're going to do a flight pattern. They'll fly around for about five minutes, that orientates themselves to the sun to the new location, it's like resetting their GPS. And then they're going to start going out and finding stuff. The commercial guys put you know, six, to eight pal six to eight bee boxes on a pallet. And what they'll do is just pick them up and move them around all over the country. And the bees know to go right, I mean, in their hive. There will be some cross, uh, cross-contamination between bees from this hive and that hive, but it's going to be negligible. Eventually, that hive over there will prevent ones from here coming out, uh, going in, unless they got pollen, unless they got uh, uh, nectar. And then they'll say, yeah, come on in, drop it off, then get out. <laughs> it's kind of like importing and exporting. Yes. Maybe we did learn from insects. Mm -hmm. And do these bees already know their queen? No, the bees do not know their queen. Okay. That's why they're in their queen cage. Okay. Oh, yeah. look at them. The ladybug. They got the butt up. Oh, we got a yeah. ladybug. They got their abdomens up. Yep. Yeah. Hey, this one over here is confused. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the queen, the queen I put in the, in the hive, that's not their queen. And that's why she's in a cage. They need to get used to their queen, their new queen. And she's going to start emitting pheromones. And they're going to, right now, if I open that, well, I don't, I don't want to open it up. <laughs> Disturb them. Um, they're, they're swarming around her. Because they, they know that they don't have a queen. And they know there's a queen in there. So, they need to get used to her. It takes about three, four days. And... The reason she's in the cage is that gives the that gives her an amount of time to to get used to everything. Now what they're going to try to do to get to her is a little sugar cube. They're going to try to eat, her. and it, it takes a couple days to eat through that. I'm going to go in three days from now, and she's not out of that out of that queen cage. I'll pop, pop the sugar cube or, or or get rid of the cork or something, and just dump her in the pot. Okay. And she's not going to go. Anywhere. But by that time, they're, they're already going to start building home.
trying to figure out why you just don't turn it upside down, hold it in your hand. Because I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> Good idea, Kent. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. He's got a bee on his finger. I'm going to be care very careful when I pull this I'm out. To mash them. Because I do not want to crush any of them. Now, just like before. Oh, Ow! Okay, that's ceased on me. That was rude. Yeah. Why'd you say ow? Do you really want to know? Do you really want to know? Uh -oh. That one was, that was angry. Yeah, some are angry. Come on now, they're getting mad. They are getting angry. I know. He's just hanging out. Yep. There he went. If you, if they get on you, just walk away. They'll they'll leave you. Yeah, they will. They set that on top of my head. He just likes it up there. Yep. We had to pause for station identification there. <laughs> Ow! Yeah, you, they, they, they smell it. Okay, I need my hat. Yeah, I need my hat. Okay, let's head, step on back. I need to watch my head get the pheromone off. Just yeah, I could do that. Just lick, just lick his spot. We'll lick his wound <laughs> for him. He'll heal. Let's go ahead and put this on. It's not a common. You hold that for me. It's not a common for Does them like to me? get grumpy and get in your hair. They got really noisy. Right. Yeah, the pitch tell it. changes. You could tell it. Yeah, they were really got started swarming around your head, and they, and they got noisy. Yeah. Well, I'm not touching the one on top again. I'm going to look. Well, probably what happens when when he got stung is probably when they because yeah. that's when it seemed like they got really angry. Yeah. yeah. Once once you get stung, once that pheromone hits, they they go nuts. Hence the stung and run theory. Yes. yes. Like for. Uh, yellow jackets and things like that. I'm sure they're the same way. <laughs> Not so much fear. There's a, there's a pain thing going on. <laughs> I got Frank saying, ouch, twice. That was cool. <laughs> oh, let me see my... A nice little helper there. Oh man, look at that big old ball. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool. They're starting to gather around there. Oh, that's right. They don't like to be blowed on. No. No, the ball, they, they were just on the, on the sugar water. What are you saying, cool? They were in there on the sugar water. It's a big ball of them. Yeah. Don't play Frank. Let me see if I can get him close. Oops. That ain't good. He mastered one. I did one. Oh, what does that mean? They're coming out? Yeah, they're, they're going to get grumpy. mad.
Try to tell him. Get out of the way. That was cool to see that, though. Glad we had both of them. One good, one bad. Yep, killed another one. I heard it already crunch. <laughs> oh, you got extra bars. You want to hand them to me? Yeah. Yes. I accidentally killed one. Oh, dear. A couple of them, actually. Oh, dear. They're probably making them happy, huh? No, they're grumpy. They'll get you back. <laughs> yeah, each colony, each hive is going to be different. Each colony is going to be different. Yeah. They're going to have their own temperament. <laughs> Looks like I only killed about four of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, folks. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. You don't want to be in, you need to be in this thing. Come stand over here by the hive. Yeah. So I can show you participate. I just need it for college. I'm going to show you mine. I've got good pictures. Get a picture of them, honey, doing their happy dance. Get a real good picture of them doing happy dance. Yeah, if they get in your hair, it's you're going to Because they, they'll get confused. I've been bit before when they climb up to the back of my shirt and they can't get out. It's not that they're rubbing, it's not that they're dressing, but they can't get confused. I hear you. I'm leaving. That's all right.